Today I'd like to take you through the process of setting up self-enrollment in Moodle 2. And this is a really handy uh, process. It's changed quite a bit from the uh, Moodle 1.9 version that we used to run. So uh, we'll just take a quick minute here to go through that process. I'm logged into a course here and I'm logged in as an instructor. So I go down to my settings and I want to look at users and I want to look at enrollment methods. So I'm going to click here and this takes me to a page that allows me to set up a couple different enrollment methods. You can see manual enrollment is currently enabled here which would mean that I would go through and manually add or create student accounts and then manually add them into the course. That can be somewhat time consuming and uh, is just not a lot of fun. Uh, allowing students to self-enroll eases that burden on you as the coordinator instructor of the course and you can set a uh, course enrollment key that adds a level of security. So we're going to edit the self-enrollment here for participants. And I can give it a custom instance name, in which case I'm just going to grab the name of the course. And we have to allow self-enrollments. And I can set an enrollment key right here. And I'm going to unmask that so I can see what I'm typing because I'm not the most proficient typist. And so I've set the enrollment key. Now we're not going to worry about group enrollment keys because we're not setting groups up for this course. We want people to be enrolled when they self-enroll as a student, so that's our default assigned role. Now I can set an enrollment duration here if I wanted to open enrollment on a specific day and then have it close so that you could limit the students that uh, the, the time period the students could actually access or set up their accounts but we're not going to do that. I can also I can also automatically unenroll inactive users after a certain number of uh, days but I'm not going to set that up right now and again I can set a maximum enrollment. I can send a custom welcome message uh, which is actually a nice thing to do when the students enroll they get a confirmation confirmation email with a, a welcome message in it so you can go in and customize that uh, to say, you know, welcome to X, Y, or Z, so on and so forth. I'm not going to do that right now for our illustration purposes. I'm just going to save changes. And you can now see that we have an enrollment method called NICA12, which is what we uh, titled it. And it is active. So if somebody wants to enroll in the course, they will go there and uh, create their account. Or if they already have an account in the system, they will need the enrollment key. Uh, but if they are a new student, they create their account and then they can access the course using the enrollment key. I can, of course, go back in and edit this if I want to change my options uh, just by clicking on the edit icon. And if I wanted to, uh, if I was running the course a second time and I wanted to change the enrollment key just to ensure some uh, privacy for the new group coming in, I would just go in and uh, alter that here and save it. So that's the process of setting up the enrollment key. Now what that looks like from the student end is So as a student I've, I've come in and I, I pasted in the URL for the uh, course that was sent to me and here it is the view PHP question mark ID equals 135 so I'm taken to the login page I already have a username I've created my account um, if I were a new participant or, or a student I would click the create account button and it would just take me to the standard create account once I've created my account and received the confirmation email and confirmed that I would come back here plug my username in and my password and I'm going to log in. And here I am. I'm taken to the course, but I need the enrollment key. So until I plug that enrollment key in, I cannot access it. So I'm going to do that. And we're going to unmask it to see if I did it correctly. And I misspelled it. And there we go. I plugged in the enrollment key properly with the proper uh, case and I now have access to the course and I can participate in uh, any of the activities that have been set up for that course. 
And for the student who is enrolled, they get an enrollment message. And if I had plugged in a custom message, they would have gotten that here. Uh, and with a link to edit their profile, but just a simple welcome. And that's the process of setting up self-enrollment, both from the, the course coordinator or instructor or facilitator end and what the process looks like from the student end.